And then later, once the training is underway, and after the trained model is deployed, and it's in production, and we're relying upon it as part of our business operations that are automated or related to this somehow, or or we're relying upon it for um, human decision making. Um, the the assessment of how well this is performing uh, is that not up to the analyst? So, does the analyst not look at this? a few days after it's in production or a couple of weeks later and go, you know, this isn't actually, we're not catching many fish. Um, the, the, every, you know, everything was customized based on the training data we had to work with. Um, but the, the, the haul of fish is not meeting expectations. We're catching two fish a day. We were expecting to catch 20. So, uh, what does the analyst do when when they see that? Yeah. So yeah. So once we have our model trained, it gets deployed as part of some sort of a uh, business application. Say for example, like a recommendation system, or let's say you are just uh, beat a very like simple case like spam uh, email detection. Now there has to be uh, something in place that looks at the efficiency of our model. Because there could be, uh, over the period of time, it could be that the, the characteristics of the data or the, the actual, uh, the, so yeah, the, the interaction between the different attributes of the data that we captured as our model, they might change. So in other words, the nature of the data might change or the actual pattern, the type of pattern we have uh, originally uh, captured that might change over the period of time. So, so now, sorry to interrupt, Wajid. What you just described, um, could we relate it to our scenario? Yeah. Um, what What do we, as you know, as um, professional fishers, uh, what do we do if, despite our best efforts, the net isn't catching many fish? Do we try to get new data from elsewhere to better train our model or are we collecting new data from the fishing activity yeah. we've carried out so far to better optimize our model what what typically mm -hmm. do we do to improve so again just uh, going back in terms of the the, the fisherman's uh, kind of face uh, expedition now over there yeah uh, the fisherman would be keeping an eye on like, okay, what's the yield? Say for example, like, okay, when we, the very first time we uh, tuned those weights, then yeah, the yield was, I don't know, 100 salmons per day, something like that. However, over the period of, I don't know, a month or so, uh, the yield has, is, is kind of like dropping. So that's, that's a concern for the fishermen. So what they need to then do is it could be, well, let's keep it simple. It could be that now the 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 salmon we thought is is like this this area of water is full of this specific type of salmon. Maybe it's just because of evolution, or maybe they migrated somewhere else, and now we have a different type of salmon here. Mm -hmm. So even though it is still salmon, but the type of salmon on which we kind of customize our net, it is no longer valid. Or it's not 100% robust. So this is exactly like you just said uh, moments ago that now we need to take that fresh batch of salmons and kind of retune our weights of our fishing net so that then the net, our fishing net, is now customized to catching this new kind of type of salmon. And well, this is. Yeah. What, what what if there are other fishing boats around competing for the same salmon? And we realize that perhaps that is one of the reasons we're not catching as many as we thought we would. Um, and if it is more of a market dynamic issue, perhaps we thought we were targeting a certain segment of customers that were not being served, but then we realize that there are competitors already making inroads 
to that um, segment of customers, that could change our training process entirely, could it not? Yeah, yeah, very much. So I think the external market forces, uh, so apart, uh, apart from the data itself, it could be that there's a different, like the business requirement might change over the period of time, because just like you just mentioned, because of uh, like uh, there is some other competitor, they might be catching our fish, let's say mm -hmm. in this case. So what we need to do is then we need to come up with a different plan in this case. And then a different algorithm? It could be. It could be that uh, again, if uh, depending upon the if the so put it this way, if the nature of the problem hasn't changed uh, by an order of magnitude, then it would be more or less we would keep on using the same algorithm. However, retrain it. But mm. it could be that our business requirements have now changed altogether. So in other words, rather than using a black box model. Now we need, like maybe there's a new regulation in place. Say, for example, like, right. uh, say, for example, we are in the business of uh, uh, giving credit to people. So we, we need to, like, uh, processing. So our application, uh, credit application processing procedure involves ML model. Now there's a new requirement that, hey, you need to, as part of ethical AI and, you know, responsible AI, uh, we need to make sure you're not, uh, you know, uh, doing uh, like being, uh, you're not being, you're being unfair, let's say. So right. as part of that, you might want to then move away from, let's say, just a very coarse kind of example, move away from neural networks to a decision tree, say, for example, mm -hmm. because decision tree is something where you can look into the logic of how it works, how it arrived at its decision. So yeah, then there would be retraining involved. Using Based on tree. your experience, Wajit, when, when the results of our model training are not what we were um, expecting uh, and we're not getting the results that we need for our business, it, is it usually a matter of working with the same algorithm and better optimizing and training the model? Or is it um, sometimes or more often a case of the wrong algorithm having been chosen from the beginning. So in our in our example here, perhaps the analyst uh, assumed they were there alone to pursue this type of salmon, and they did not have the intelligence or the the um, the the input data uh, necessary to also factor in the um, possibility of competing uh, fishing boats also looking to target the same kind of salmon. So uh, they, they, they just chose the wrong algorithm for, what, for how the problem actually existed. And in this case, because it's a greater problem, it's not just about making sure that that net will target that salmon. It's about perhaps... Um, the results will tell us now with a new algorithm that we should deploy 10 different nets in 10 different locations during different times in order to better compete with the activity that's happening around us to better get the results we want. Uh, how often does that happen? That it's, it's actually the wrong algorithm chosen, and we don't realize that until we are in production and don't get the analysis results that we were hoping for. So. Um... I think, it, to be honest, it doesn't happen, again, just based on my experience, it doesn't happen that often, whereby, because uh, in terms of machine learning, you are more concerned about the actual accuracy of your results. So let's say you chose algorithm A, then uh, trained a model based on that algorithm, and then you got some accuracy based on that. Now. As long as you are making the right kind of uh, right predictions, let's say most of the times, let's say whatever your business KPIs are, as long as you're doing that, then you are doing a good job. But let's say there's, there's a change in the market, something happens out there, the nature of the data changes, or so in, in that case, then normally 
you wouldn't just simply jump to another algorithm uh, all of a sudden. So the, the jump to a different algorithm would only come if, let's say, there have been some new developments and there is some evidence that's available that um, by switching to the other algorithm, there would be a gain of, let's say, 10 to 20 percent. So then th that's kind of like normally that kind of situation justifies in terms of moving to a totally different type of an algorithm. But mm -hmm. uh, because, but the nature of the problem, more or less, as long as the nature of the problem that we were originally tasked with, it doesn't change, then normally you won't make that kind of like a quantum jump. So if, okay. it, is a, so, yeah, if it is a supervised learning task, you would s still choose a algorithm within that supervised learning area. You, you would expect the analyst to have a proper grasp of the business problem before yeah. going through this process, exactly. in which case That's right. they would have known about market conditions ahead of time. I understand. Yeah.